Okay, good morning everyone. For today, uh, we're going to discuss cellular membrane and transport mechanisms. All right. So, um, all cells have a cell membrane. Uh, the function of this is to control what enters and exits to the cell, maintain an internal balance or what you call a homeostasis. And it also provides protection and support for the cell. So on your screen, a real picture of a cell membrane under EM or the transmission electron microscopy. Okay, so what is the structure of cell membrane? So cell membrane has a two layer of phospholipids, this one and this one. And we have the phosphate head, which is, uh, it is polar. Why? Because they are hydrophilic or uh, they love water. While uh, the fatty acid tails or the non-polar tail, uh, they are what you call hydrophobic or they are water -filly. Uh There is also a proteins embedded in our cell membrane. Okay, so phosphate group plus uh, glycerol together, it is phospholipid. Okay. All right, so here's a fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane. As what you can see, there, there's a protein embedded in it, this one. And it actually, there's also a small amount of fats that is attached in our cell membrane. So in here, uh, the non-polar tails are on inside because they don't want water or they are afraid of water. While the polar head are on outside, they go where water is. Okay. All right, so uh, as what you have observed in this picture, the cell membrane has pores or holes in it. Ayan. Okay, so um, that's why uh, they are called selectively permeable because uh, they allow uh, some molecule uh, to go in and keep other molecules out. So basically, the structure helps it be selective. All right, so let's proceed with the cell transport mechanism. So our cells need to take in things uh, that they need and get rid of the things they don't need. So they uh, usually need to, communi to com communicate with one another. So that's why we have here is uh, two main types of cell transport mechanisms that proves how important all the processes involving cells in all living organisms. Okay, so let's start with uh, the passive transport. So when we say passive transport, um, it is the movement of materials across the cell membrane without using energy. And it caused by concentrating gradient. So we have three types of passive transport. We have um, diffusion, we have facilitated diffusion, and process. Okay. And. So, uh, first is diffusion. So, uh, the process by which molecules spread from area of high concentration to areas of low concentration. 
So since it is under passive transport, there is no energy required. So for example, a perfume is sprayed in one part of a room, yet soon it diffuses so that you can smell it everywhere. And um, another example is a food coloring. So a drop of food coloring diffuses throughout the water in the glass so that eventually um, the entire glass will become or will be colored. Okay, so another example is um, when steeping a cup of tea, molecules from the tea cross from the tea bag and diffuse throughout the cup of water. So another example is when shaking salt into water, the salt dissolves and the ions move until they are already or evenly distributed. And so next again. So the picture shows or the uh, video shows the movement of molecules from high concentration um, to low concentration until equilibrium is reached. When we say equilibri uh, equilibrium, it is when the molecules are even throughout a space. And, okay, so next is facilitated diffusion. So it's when the molecules that cannot directly diffuse across the membrane pass through a specific protein channels. So, and there is no additional energy here. Okay. So, um, what is or what characterize, characterizes facilitated diffusion from the other types of passive transport is the need of assistance from a transport protein lodged in the plasma membrane. This one. Okay, so the passive movement of substances such as biological molecules or ions across a plasma membrane by means of a transport protein located in the plasma membrane. So, um, since the movement of substances is from greater to lesser concentrations, chemical energy is neither used nor required. Okay, so next is osmosis. So osmosis, it is the diffusion of water through a selectively permeable membrane down its concentration gradient. So from area of um, high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. So osmosis is a simple natural process that occurs all around and inside us. So it is one of the most vital processes for our survival. So everything needs to reach equilibrium uh, and to reach at equilibrium that uh, the most crucial role is played by the water. So even each cell of our body, the plants and also animals around us are surviving due to osmosis. So osmosis functions as a life preserver. So from helping our cells to survive to the desalination of seawater, the process involved is osmosis. Okay, so under osmosis, we have isotonic, hypertonic, and hypotonic. So when we say isotonic, it is when concentrations of, of solute and solvent are equal. While the hyperto hypertonic, there is a higher concentration of solutes, while the hypotonic, uh, lower concentration of solutes. And so. Um, when the plasma surrounding blood cells is an isotonic solution, this one, uh, compared to the solution inside the blood cells, the cells function normally. So the isotonic solution allows the cells to move 
uh, water and nutrients in and out of the cells. So this is necessary for blood cells to perform the function of delivering oxygen and other nutrients to other parts of the body. So if the cells are in hypertonic, um, all right, so if the cells are in uh, the hypertonic environment, um, they will become plasmolized and uh, will not contain enough water to perform cellular functions. So if the cell exists in hypotonic environment, uh, they will be spilling their uh, contents into bloodstream. Okay? So uh, this can cause dangerous side effects as well as the loss of many blood cells. So these events can be seen in the illustration on your screen. Okay, so uh, what is this osmotic pressure? So this is actually the pressure required to prevent the passage of water through a semi-permeable membrane from a region of low concentration of solutes to one of higher concentration by osmosis. So solvents create this pressure and this prevents plant cell uh, from breaking. Okay, so let's proceed with the active transport. When you say active transport is defined as a process that um, involves the movement of molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region, to a region of higher concentration against a gradient or an obstacle with the use of external energy. So... Um, during the process of active transport, a protein pump um, makes use of stored energy in the form of ATP. So what's ATP? It is other adenosine triphosphate. So to move molecules, this one. Okay, so this picture shows the process of active transport. So it uses an external energy, this one. Um, for the movement of the molecules. So we have two types of active, active transport. We have molecular transport or the protein pump, pumps and walk transport under this or the uh, endocytosis and exocytosis. Okay. So molecules or particles are just too large to pass through the plasma membrane or to move through a transport protein. So cells use uh, two other active transport processes to move these macromolecules or the large molecules into or out of the cell. So endocytosis is the process of capturing a uh, substance or particle from outside of the cell by engulfing it with the cell membrane. So the membrane folds other uh, the membrane folds over the substance and it becomes completely enclosed by the membrane. So at this point, uh, a membrane bound sac or vesicle pinches off and moves the substances into the cytosol. So there are two main kinds of endocytosis. First is First is phenocytosis. So it is what you call the cellular drinking. So it occurs when the plasma membrane folds, folds inward to form a channel allowing dissolved substances to enter the cell. Okay, so next is phagocytosis. So they are called the cellular eating. So it occurs when the dissolved materials enter the cell and the plasma membrane engulfs the solid material forming a phagocyte, uh, phagocytic vesicle. Okay, so uh, what is exocytosis? So it is a 
um, cellular process where cell eject waste products or chemical transmitters such as uh, hormones from the interior of the cell. So uh, exocytosis is similar in function to endocytosis but works in opposite direction. So exocytosis des uh, describes the process of vesicles fusing with the plasma membrane and releasing their contents to the outside of the cell. So as shown in your screen, uh, we have exocytosis, of course, uh, when a cell produces substances for export, such as uh, protein, or when the cell is getting rid of uh, waste product or a toxin. So newly made membrane proteins and membrane lipids are moved on the top of the plasma membrane by exocytosis. Okay, so that's it. Hope you learned a lot from our discussion today. Uh, same instruction for your attendance. You need to comment your name, section and your kitty Thanks and God bless. Always remember that you are amazing. Thank you.